Hey guys, what's up? It is Matt Lane, and welcome back to another weekly gaming podcast with Jay Buston and myself. We're Today. actually going to talk about games this week. Yep. <laughs> Say Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. We will be talking about games, going back to, uh, I guess, the the roots, quote unquote, of this podcast, uh, getting away from the serious one of last week. But if you want to hear more serious stuff, just let us know. We'll be happy to talk about it. Today, Jay or Buston. really sad to talk about <laughs> or just de- overly depressing things like Canada, <laughs> like Canada. Moving on uh, <laughs> today, uh, Jay, Mister Nintendo himself, is going to take us down a uh, a brief look at a game coming out the end of this month, uh, specifically a Mario game. Um, but uh, I'm I'm going to stop talking now and let Jay tackle that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, this we're talking about Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. It's coming out mm-hmm. o- o- October. <laughs> August 29th, um, which, you know, by the time this episode comes out is only a couple weeks away. Um, Mm -hmm. And this is not a Mario game. So the story, for those of you who don't, everyone kind of knows this, but I don't think Matt does. So I'll catch you up to speed and use that as an excuse to educate the people that may be ignorant but don't want to admit it. Um, (laughs) So basically Ubisoft, you know, the Assassin's Creed nerds, um, showed up to Nintendo one day and they were like, hey, we want to make a Mario game. You know, we want to make a game with Mario. And, you know, because they're, they're big fans. Like, the, the people who started Ubisoft, like, really looked up to Nintendo and they really were like, w- like, working with Nintendo would be awesome. And Nintendo, you know, Shigeru Miyamoto, um, kind of the head developer of things over there, said, you know, that's, that's great. Um, We'd love for you to do that, which is kind of a strange step for Nintendo. They're very protective of their IPs, but, you know, whatever. It's kind of nice to see them trusting someone else with their intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Um, but they said, but don't make it a Mario game. Don't make it a platformer. Don't make it, you know, don't, I don't want another Mario game. Just make another game, make your game with Mario in it. Mm-hmm. And so they came up with Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Um the Rabbids are like they're like Ubisoft's like Goombas, in my opinion. They're just kind of like the just the faceless, well, not faceless, literally, but like you know, generic masses of just craziness and stupidity. I'm not actually, a big fan of them. I was actually going to say they were the minions before they were minions. That's a really good analogy, actually. Um, yeah, they are. I, I know they're what rabbits are. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of them. I don't really. They they kind of like invaded Rayman and ruined Rayman for a little while and. Uh, they yeah, make Rayman funny was... noise. They they make funny noises. I'll give them that. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you know it's it's to me it's just very toilet humory. You know, it's so, just I like they, slapstick cheap comedy. They just have those random like outburst screams that is almost like Tourette's like in nature. That I don't know. <laughs> it just makes me laugh whenever they do it. I mean, if I if I sat there and played an entire game of it, I'm sure it'd get old. But like if I see yeah. it every now and then, I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, like I said, cheap comedy. You know, it's easy, but it, like it gets old really quick. Um, so I'm not going to go into like the story of this game at all. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple, I mean, it's a Mario game at the end of the day. So this, the story is pretty easy and it's actually not Bowser kidnaps Peach for once because Nintendo didn't make it. Um, mm-hmm. but basically the rabbits have fallen into the Mario universe and some of them are good, but most of them aren't. And so Mario and his pals, you know, Peach and, and Yoshi and Luigi and Toad, I think, I don't know, you know, the Mario crew, are teaming up with rabid versions of the Mario crew. So you've got rabid Peach, rabid Mario, rabid Luigi, rabid Yoshi, et cetera, et cetera. Which are basically just, you know, rabbits wearing hats and fake mustaches. Um, right. and it's, it's a strategy game. It's like a, it's like an XCOM style top down strategy shooter. It's really interesting. Hmm. Now I have to admit when we first, cause this, this was one of the games that leaked pre E3. Um, Ubisoft or Ubisoft or however you want to pronounce it, kind of let this one out like three weeks before E3 started. And I took a look at it and I said, pass, like a hard no. Um, and then I saw the gameplay of it. And I have to say, I changed my mind. Um, this game really does look fun. It's, you can kind of play it your own style. You know, there's different types of weapons you can use. So you can kind of be, you know, Running and gunning, you can kind of be the long distance guy. You can do explosives, snipers, machine guns, RPGs, but like they're all like Mario versions of them. So it's like bullet bills, bob bombs, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and um, it looks like a lot of fun to play. 
from uh, I know there's only so much we know, but I haven't even watched the trailer. So from that alone, is there going to be any sort of um, I guess the best way to ask would be like free roam or just moving around? Not necessarily as like an open world aspect, but just moving without it being fight or is it simply going to be, Hey, level fight. Hey, here's another level fight. No, there is, um, kind of, I don't know if overworld is the right word for it, but like you, you start off and you're like at the castle and then you walk down a road and there's coins to collect and you know, you Mario stuff. And then you get to like this like arena type thing. And it's like, there are, there are bad guys here. And so then you get into like fight mode and it's turn based and it's, you know, all that kind of stuff, which I, I enjoy. Um, it's, oh, yeah, it's so strategy. Good. You got to think about it. Each character kind of moves a little differently. You can, you know, jump off of a character you already have in position to get to like a, a, a boost, like a higher up altitude thing or jump over a wall and take someone out. Um, it looks like a ton of fun. I, I just have to admit. And the the interesting thing with this is that uh, and I can already know wh- what's going to happen before the game even comes out to where you'll have kind of split into two directions you'll have the the groups of people that uh, really enjoy it because it's something different it's something unique it's not just overusing this trope of just the same mario over and over and over again but hey higher quality graphics you know equals new fun (laughs) Uh, and then you have the opposite of that which i guess you would call the maybe the uh hardcore mario fans that automatically diss it before even playing it because it's not quote unquote Mario. Yeah. 12 year olds. Right. Well, well, <laughs> that are that are 40 year olds still living in certain basements that we won't just, uh, well, I think, I think anyone old enough to pay serious attention to things knows what this game is already. Like they're not going to buy it and be like, what, what is this? This is not what I was expecting. That's what I was saying though. Like there will be those that are like that and won't even give it a chance because they just, say oh mario can only be this like you can't touch it in any other way which i'm not really that way with anything like i mean there might be things that only work that way but i don't see why you can't try it i'm not i'm not opposed to testing the waters on things i'm not (laughs) like a a supremacist of video games like i know how all these things should work (laughs) no (laughs) Not, yeah. not, not not me. No, I, uh, I agree. It is kind of refreshing to see such a new role for such... I mean, let's be honest, such an old character. Right. I mean, when was the last time that you've seen something this different of how the typical Mario schematic works? Yeah, I mean, like, at the end of the day, like, I know it's kind of a cartoony one, but at the end of the day, like, this is like a shooter. It's got shooting elements in it. Like, it's not a first person or even, like, really a third person shooter, but it's like a top down <laughs> XCOM style shooter. Oh, gosh. Could you imagine a first person shooter, Mario? Uh, I wouldn't play it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust Nintendo or anyone <laughs> Nintendo trusts to make a good enough first person shooter. So Jay's on that first category. He, he will refuse to play Mario if it's first person shooter. <laughs> well, I, like, but, like, fair enough. Like, when I first saw this game announced, I imme- like, without even looking at what it was, I immediately said, I do not want to play this game. Yep. And then I saw what the game was. So I, I, I changed my mind on it. I was proven wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. It looks fun. It really does. And, uh, and as an added bonus, um, one of my favorite video game composers, Grant Kirkhope, you know, the guy behind Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie, DK64, ukulele more recently, um, is doing the entire soundtrack for it. Mm. So now while we're on the concept of Nintendo, let me ask you this. Do uh, it could be a for this game and then uh, B just for moving forward. Is this game going to be for Switch and Wii U? And then moving forward, do we know how much longer they're going to give it before they kind of stop making the new ones for Wii U? I believe this is a Switch exclusive. Um, OK, I, I think that Breath of the Wild is really the end of Nintendo um, property being on the Wii U. You know, there's still some games that will. I mean, quite like like Just Dance, which is a stinking Ubisoft <laughs> title that comes out every year. That game they're still making for the Wii, never mind the Wii U. So like, there's going to be Ooh. some people out there that are still supporting the older hardware. But Nintendo's more or less moving away from it. They're, they're going to focus and put all their eggs in this basket that is the Switch. That is being successful. You know, it's still a system people are having a hard time finding, not necessarily because there's a shortage, but because people are buying it. So it's, I think Nintendo's really, they, 
I don't know why they released Breath of the Wild same day on the Wii U. You know, they kind of did that with um, Twilight Princess, where they released it on the Wii. Like, it was it was a Wii title, um, launch title. But then, like, a week later, they brought it out for the GameCube, too. Um, I'm guessing because at that point, the Switch was still fairly new. But they did the same thing with the Wii, but they waited a week. So, like... You know, like, Breath of the Wild was such a hot title, and people were like, I want to play this right now. But, like, to me, you didn't make... if you Because you released it on the Wii U, you didn't give people a big enough reason to buy the Switch, you know? It's just That's also a true way to look at it, but that's... I mean, it's kind of weird now thinking about it, though, because if, if Nintendo is still releasing stuff for the Wii, then there's really no telling of what they choose to release backwards or not. Well, Nintendo's not releasing stuff on the Wii. Ubisoft is. Granted, but you still have games that are available for purchase on the older system, even though they're a newer game. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting because you're not really used to seeing that on any of the other ones aside from uh, their online stores to where you can kind of yeah. really get any game you want to. I mean, but. there's not many. I think Just Dance is, like, really the only one, and that's just because it's such a small title, like, like space-wise, it doesn't take much to run it. You don't need cutting-edge graphics for a freaking Dance Dance Revolution game. Um, that and and I it's can, I, in I the motion you, controls. I can tell you from working at GameStop for the few years that I did that more people buy the regular Wii than probably any console... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, it was one of the biggest consoles. Well, you know? well, at least when I was a gay son, the reason being now, uh, and I'm not necessarily talking about when it came out, but like now it's just so cheap. Like, I, th- I think it's less than 50 bucks. Yeah, it sounds uh, about right. It's like, it's like stupid cheap. So, you know, people that don't have quite as much money and are on a budget will come and get it or people who just are not big gamers, you know, they'll get that because they know it's all about group and family stuff. So it's just a kind of a mixture of things is you'd have people come in all the freaking time buying those things and pretty much 90 percent of the time they'd always not know what they needed and i'm like okay you're gonna need a sensor bar you're gonna need this you're gonna need this <laughs> well i i know friends that bought a wii um i don't want to say recently it was probably like three or four years ago but they bought it because they wanted something they could hook up to their tv to watch netflix on that's <laughs> it and this was kind of before like the amazon fire stick and the roku and all that stuff. Apple TV is just too expensive just to watch Netflix. So I don't know, man. Chromecast has been around for a pretty long time. Yeah, but some people are stupid. <laughs> I mean, maybe so. But the uh, plus, I don't like Google. So, uh, <laughs> well, there's that. I'm a Go- Firefox guy. Thank you very much. Ah, Chromecast works pretty well. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bark at that one too much. I just have uh, Apple TV, so bite me. I do. I have both. So <laughs> are you with both? Both. Man, there there are reasons for many things in life. Chromecast is a lot easier to carry with you on the go. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, it's like I can put, literally put it in my pocket like a USB yeah. stick. So if I get to someone's house who does not have Netflix capabilities, I'm like, hey, do you have internet? Yep. Okay, let's watch Netflix. Plug it in, good to go. I'll sign into mine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that that's why. Um, I initially got it for work back when I worked at AT&T so we could – Pop in Netflix for like kids are kicking and screaming all over the place, and that's a real easy way to sit them down and shut them up. Uh, because <laughs> you just put on like Madagascar or something, suddenly they're just not even moving. Hey, we're back. Yep. Uh, were you not hearing something? What's up? Were you not hearing something? Uh, no, my Discord crashed right around the point where you said log into Netflix and good to go. I, I didn't miss much. <laughs> I, oh, I literally Discord. missed like I literally missed like 10 15 seconds. Oh Discord. That's funny because all like literally a couple episodes ago you, we had the same problem where it was it last out. episode, dude. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, <laughs> and then I, I That time it was my internet. My my was, internet took a dump. It was really funny cuz when it happened I knew I was like I'm going to be able to edit this and they're not even going to know and then you talked No, about I was actually <laughs> I was super impressed with how you edited it together. I was like waiting for it cuz I knew it was coming. I remembered exactly where it happened. Yeah, and no I was idea. listening back to it, and I was like, oh, he did such a good job with it. Now I'm going to sound like the prick. And then <laughs> no I said it, knew. and I sounded like the prick. <laughs> no one, because most in most times, like, unless we were, like, finishing a sentence and it just didn't finish, then it might be a little difficult. 
But at that one, I think you had ended your train of thought before it cut off. Oh, fun. So like it, it, it was real easy. Nothing yep. real major there. Um, I can't even remember what that kind of derailed into a whole nother. Yeah, well, we were talking about uh, freaking Mario Chrome Mario cast. Rabbits. Yeah, let's Mario Rabbits. There. Let's get back on that. What when when are when is this game coming out? This game is coming out August 29th, so that's just in a couple of weeks. You know, that's it's it's in two weeks actually from the date of this podcast releasing. No, sorry, less than two weeks. Um, it's a Tuesday. That's kind of weird. Um, is it is it going to be a full? Uh, $60 game? Or it is a $60 game, yes. And I think, in my opinion, um, this is my opinion on $60 games. Very few games to me are worth $60. Mm-hmm. Um, but because $60 seems to be the price of video games, then it's worth it. You know, it's it's like <laughs> things are worth what people are willing to pay, which is a stupid way to do things, but it is what it is. Um, yep. You know, like, games like Skyrim and things like that, like, those are $60 games, but, like, freaking Assassin's Creed and, and Call of Duty, like, to me, those are, like, $40 games, but, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> but, like, and, like, Mario Rabbids Kingdom, I would like to see the price less, but it does look like a full game. There's It's really flushed out. The replayability seems to be pretty high. Um, it, it just looks like a game that I'm going to have a lot of fun with, and it's because of the nature of it. I think it's a perfect game for the Switch because, like, like, yeah, you can play it on your couch and you can have a grand old time with it, but it also looks like a really easy game to just like play while you're on the go too, because it's <laughs> it's turn based, so you can just be like, oh, hang on, you know. Ah, uh, so like if you had to switch, could you just like meet somebody randomly wherever you are? Yeah, like, for hey. your for your rooftop millennial parties that Nintendo seems to think everyone has. <laughs> Please, I, I I mean there might be some out there somewhere. I don't know, but uh, someone <laughs> invite me. I want to come and bring my Switch and play Mario Kart with you. Someone be friends with Jay. He really doesn't have any. It's I very need sad. Friends. <laughs> I'm hanging up now. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's actually gonna be it for today's podcast, guys. Uh, that's gonna be Mario Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. Be on the lookout for that at the end of August if you are a Nintendo person and have a Switch specifically. I know Jay's uh, slightly excited. Are you are you gonna be getting it, Jay? Do you know? Uh, yeah, probably. If not on launch, then very close to it. I do, like Tuesday is such a weird day for me, but like I'll pick it up that weekend at the latest. So if you don't get it and you're curious about it, you can always ask Mr. J about it and he can probably yep. give, you, give you the probably, lowdown. I'll probably end up live streaming it at some point in the mm. near future. So that'll if be, you, if you want a firsthand look and ask me my opinions of it, you can head on over to twitch.tv slash Let's Chase and watch me play it live. Hashtag plug. Selfless plug. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Never do. Uh, so the question of the day, and I think this would be an interesting one that if people do comment on that, I could we see a lot of different answers on this. Uh, ha- and I'll give my answer and let Jay uh, retort to his. How do you feel price wise that uh, full release games should be? What price? Because, you know, I think me and Jay are both on the same page that we think fifty nine ninety nine is just quite frankly a little much. Um and there might be some games every now and then that you could make that argument with, but for the industry as a whole, I think that's a bit much, especially how often games come out now and yeah. how little of a time you keep games with how things progress. It just seems like that's just them being greedy more than anything. Like you want to think to yourself that, well, these games are very advanced and high quality. So, you know, it makes sense for them to be expensive, but at the same time, yeah. Well, that's not just, to mention not really an excuse. Not to mention, like they sell consoles for a loss generally, right? You know, like like the the PS4 is probably a five hundred dollar console that they sell for three four hundred bucks or whatever. But then they make it up on the software, so it's like, yeah, you're by games being sixty bucks, you're saving a couple of hundred on buying a console, right? So it's so it's it's like a give and take situation. But there there are plenty of good things to back up of why they are that expensive. But we're going to say all that aside, just how much do you think would be reasonable if you're not including the logic of, you know, funding games and you're not having to worry about all that crap. Just give a good, <laughs> just give a good reasonable idea of how much as a consumer, games. I think somewhere, and I know this is still close to that price range, but I think somewhere between 40 and 50 would be more reasonable. Yeah. 40, um, 45 bucks is kind of where I'd fall. And, you know, it it vastly depends. I don't like the, this, this notion of all games 
sticking with that same price range because there are some games that are like nowhere freaking close. I'm like, just because you're a big title and you're, you know, coming out, you don't have to be this full fledged price. Like if you're comparing the order to Horizon Zero Dawn, like my God, there was no reason for the order to be fifty nine nine nine. Yeah, like an so, eight hour game versus a two hundred and eight hour game. Eight hours of being generous, man. It was you could beat that. Like most people were closer to clocking five and six. All right, all right. <laughs> like it, it. That's and with no other real things to do. Like, oof. <laughs> yeah, and that's. that's that's and again, it also comes down to like buying games on launch and and pre-ordering games. Like I will never pre-order a game from a company that I don't 100% trust, you know. Correct. Um just because, you know, things like No Man's Sky, Mighty Number no. 9, things like that, games that looked like they had so much promise and then whoops, they don't, you know. Right. Which I mean, fun fact of the day was this this might blow jay's mind uh no one else's because they don't know me that well but um i actually did not pre-order bloodborne hmm. believe it or not at that that was my first game introduction to the souls world oh really bloodborne was the first i mm-hmm. thought i thought you had played like demon souls dark souls one dark souls two i have now i did all that after after that though interesting uh, i don't know how that one just somehow flew under my radar never never did it um and that was my first. Someone just happened to mention that game. It was already out at the time. I was like, hmm, that sounds interesting. So got into it, loved it, and it just kind of exploded from there. So, I mean, it, you never know. You don't, it's kind of like Jay said, if you don't trust it, don't do it. But that doesn't mean it can't be something amazing for you. Uh, it could turn into something. My answer is somewhere between uh, 40 to 50, I think, is what I'd like to see. Big title games. Uh, are you on the same, Jay, or do you, you think even lower? Yeah, like 40, I, I would go 40, 45. Somewhere between there. You know, I like I, I don't mind paying 50, 60 bucks for a game that is going to engross me like Skyrim or Breath of the Wild or Fallout, you know, that I'm going to go back to time and time again and spend literally hundreds of hours on over the course of a decade or so. But a game like, like I don't know, like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I bought it, I played it for a few weeks, and then I go back to it every now and again and play it online like once a month or something like that. Like, a eh, little salty about spending 60 bucks on it, but I'm glad I have it, you know? And that's just kind of why we bring up that topic, because I know this might be one of those games that I don't really know enough about it, but it could be one of those that are like, eh, I don't know, 50, 59 seems a bit cheap, but that'll remain to be seen. Yeah, like, honestly... If, if you're not super crazy about it, like, if you're not like, I really want to play this game, because, like, I've been looking for, like, a good one-player adventure game for the Switch for a little while now, um, you know, ever since Breath of the Wild ended. So that's mainly why I'm getting this. Mm. Um, but if you're if you're not like, oh, I want to play this right now, then I would wait, because, you know, the price will drop. I'm a little against buying used copies of games from GameStop or, or places like that, because then... Nintendo and Ubisoft and the people who worked on the game aren't actually getting the money for it. You're giving it to GameStop, you know, and that's I, I don't care for GameStop too much. <laughs> but, you know, I would buy it new, but I would buy it at a reduced price. Right. That's me. Anyway, let's end this freaking episode. You heard it from Jay Bussin himself. Uh, but that's going to be it for the podcast, guys. Uh, thank you, as always, for listening. Please leave a leave a comment. Let us know how you think uh, games should be priced. And if you want to leave a comment on anything else, feel free. We'll talk about rabbits. I don't. Someone I don't be my friend. <laughs> Someone go give Jay a, a Frosty because he, he sounds like he needs another one. Uh, oh, my gosh, dude. It's like 90 <laughs> degrees here today. I'm sitting here sweating to death in a tank top. Someone so, please buy me so a So there you go. He needs another one. But as always, thanks to you guys for listening, and we will see you all on the next one. Chocolate Frosty. None of that vanilla crap. <laughs> no, vanilla's bullshit, dude. Give me a chocolate one. <laughs>